take out your highlighter. Now we're going to look at some applications of exponents, and the first application we're going to look at is compound interest. So how does compound interest work? We talked a little bit about this the other day. If you had $100 and you had a savings account that paid 2% per year, compounded annually. So that means compounded annually, they're only going to pay you interest once a year. Whereas compounded monthly, they would pay you interest 12 times a year. So they're paying you interest once a year. We would say that the compounding period is one year. After one year, you would have your $100 that you originally had, plus you would get 2% of $100, or 0 0.02 times 100. Now this is a nice thing to see, because if I wrote out 100 plus 0 0.02 times 100, there's a common factor of 100 there, and you could factor that out. And so you could just write this as 100 times 1.02. The reason this is nice as far as percentages go is you can use this often. Every time you buy something, you have to pay a percentage extra. It's called tax, right? In Manitoba, depending on what you're buying, there's GST and PST, you're paying 13% extra. So when you're trying to calculate that, you buy something for $10, it costs you the $10, plus you have to pay 13% or 0.13 of that $10. If you wanted to put this into your calculator and figure out what's the total going to be, it's just 10 times 1.13. You can add that percentage to 1, because a 1 stands for the whole amount that you have to pay, plus 13% more. And so you'd end up paying $11.30 for your $10 item. So this idea of factoring out and getting one number to multiply is nice. So what happens after two years? Well, after two years, you would have what you had after one year plus another 2% of this new amount. So you end up with 100 times 1.02 squared because that 1.02 has happened twice. So notice that after t amount of years, you're going to get this in this case. And that makes an exponential function. It makes an exponential function that's going like this. It has some transformations to it. You've got a stretch by 100, your base is 1.02, and it's increasing exponentially. So for the first x amount of years, you're not noticing a whole bunch of change, but if you left it in there long enough, that money can really, really grow. So we see this pattern. Now, taking this pattern further, what happens if it's compounded semi-annually? What happens if it's compounded quarterly? They have examples of what happens there. The idea is, is each time it's compounded and put together, we're going to get this formula. You have your initial amount here. And then you have 1 plus your interest rate. So in our first example with 2% or 13%, we could just times by 1.02 or 1.13. But when it gets compounded over more periods of time, say if it's compounded monthly, then they're only going to pay you 1 12th of the amount. If it was compounded monthly and you were supposed to get $120 for the whole year, well then, after one month, your portion that you should receive is one twelfth of that. And so you see that they have this dividing by n inside because they're dividing by how many compound periods there is in the year. And then the exponent also has that value of n in there as well. Now for every question in this unit on your exam, because they used to have this formula on your formula sheet. If you look at your formula sheet right now, it doesn't have it. When it appeared on your formula sheet, 
they used P instead of A0. They used R instead of I. But it was the same formula. I'm just showing you different letters because what's going to happen on your exam is they're going to give you the formula and they're going to describe what each thing stands for. Okay? So they're going to describe that the principle is A0, or they might use the letter P for principle, and that stands for the amount of money that you start with. They're going to tell you that I is your interest rate. And I think they'll even be clear and tell you that it's as a decimal. Because sometimes you might go, okay, if the interest rate is 5, do I put in 5 or do I put in 0 0.05? Because it is a percentage. So it is as a decimal. N is the number of compounding periods per year. And T is the number of years. So they will explain in the question what everything stands for. And then you are supposed to be able to use the formula to solve for things. That's the idea. This way, whereas the old way when they put a couple of formulas on your formula sheet, that meant that those were the only types of questions they can ask. By not providing formulas, it allows them full range of every single exponential function they can think of, whether it's in our textbook or not, you should be able to solve it. If we give you the formula and tell you what the things stand for, you should be able to read a word problem, interpret that, and be able to solve it, which is a good thing. A couple of things in this formula. Whatever the base is, in this case it's the 1 plus 1 over n, we call that a growth factor because that's how fast it's growing. And that's basically your base of your exponential function. So other questions that we're going to be looking at include exponential growth questions. Any question that is growing, whether it's, in this case, it was your investment. Money was growing. So we have a compound interest formula. We also have populations that can grow. Or at the beginning of this chapter, chapter we looked at bacteria that could grow. So those are all things called growth factors. And they will always have an equation in this form. Where you have your initial amount, A, part that you're starting with. And then whatever your base is, your base is your growth factor. How much it's growing by. And we'll also be looking at questions with exponential decay. So I guess it would wouldn't be growth because something is a decaying. I don't know if we call that a decay factor or a something, ungrowth factor, if it's decaying. So here we have our first example. It is a compound interest one. Again, it's not going to be too difficult. But what's different in this question is that the formula is not given in the question. If you were doing this question on your exam, they would say, given with the following formula, and I'll use the same, they would give you this where A is the amount after T0. I think I spelt the wrong kind of principle there. There we go. Principle or initial amount. I is our interest rate as a decimal. And N is the number of compound periods. per year. So this would be given to you in the question. The formula would be given along with the actual question. And then you have to take this and decipher what is the information that I'm given 
and can I use that information to solve for this? So in our question, principle of, oh, it is, I did spell it right, man. There we go. Principle of $1,500 invested at 4% annual interest. Yes. Or initial amount. Yeah, beautiful writing here, I know. Principle of $1,500 is invested at 4% annual interest, compounded quarterly to the nearest quarter of a year. When will the amount be $2,500. So what do we know here? We put things in. We know that the amount we want to be is $2,500. We have an initial amount of $1,500 put into place. Our interest rate is 4%. So we change that to a decimal. Compounded quarterly, that's four times per year. So if I simplify this just a bit, this is going to be 1.01. .01. I wouldn't need to simplify that. But what I wanted you to do to look at is to recognize that our growth factor in this question is 1.01. .01. If we think of our powers chart, did we make a powers chart for 1.01? .01? No. Do you know your powers of 1.01? .01? What is 1.01 .01 to the 10? 1.01 .01 to the 15? No. In this case, we're not going to be, use, be able to use the same techniques that we've done so far, where we've been able to make the bases the same, because you don't know your 1.01 .01 powers chart. We are going to learn techniques to solve this using logarithms, but we haven't learned those yet. So at this point, the best we can do is either guess and check or use our graphing calculator. And if we think about the skills that we learned with our graphing calculator at the beginning, of this chapter with our volume questions, or that was even our last chapter. What were some of the things that we learned? Well, we either can move everything over and make one side equal to zero, or we can graph both sides, put one side into y1, the other side into y2, and then look to see if we can find out where they intersect. So taking out my calculator, clearing out what we have from before. If I put 2,500 into Y1 and I put 1,500 bracket 1.01 .01 to the power. Now, if you have a newer calculator that your power goes up like mine did, you can just write 4x in your power. If you have an older calculator that when you push the power button, the little hat thing still shows up, then you're going to need to put that 4x in brackets because it'll only put the first number as the power unless you have brackets there. Now again, if you're on a standard window and you push zoom 6, nothing's going to show up. For one, we typed into, oops, We typed into our y equals, or we froze, there we go. We typed into our y equals, y1 is 2,500. So if you wrote y equals 2,500, that's a horizontal line going through 2,500. If you have your standard window that goes from negative 10 to 10, you're not going to see 2,500. So first of all, that tells me my window for my y max, I need to see 2,500 at least. So I'm going to put 3,000 in there so I can, I should see 2,500 appear across. Now, if I hit graph, I should see that 2,500. Do I see my other equation? Yes, I do. Will I get lucky and see them intersect? Oh, this is intense. Oh, just missed. Okay, 
So no. So we also have to change our x scale because we want to find out where these intersect. Some things about our red graph. Our red graph was what we wrote on the right side here. Our growth factor is 1.01. That's our exponential base. The 1500 is our initial amount. So when I look at my graph here, where that red graph crosses my y-axis is at 1500. So that's an important thing to understand as well. It looks like I'm very close to seeing where they're going to intersect. So if I go to my window and change my x max to 20, I should see them. Oh, it didn't change, did it? This one I want to change to 20. We should see them intersect. So fast, so exciting. Yes, there we go. So now that they've intersected, we can go back to second, calculate where they intersect, number five. It's going to put your cursor on one of the curves. It says, is this your first curve? Sure, push enter. Second curve, sure, push enter. Guess, push enter. And it will tell us that it happens at 12.83. Now our question said, to the nearest quarter of a year, when will it be? So we got 12.83. To the nearest quarter of a year, when will it reach 2,500? Now, if you're rounding to quarters of the year, these are both the nearest quarters of the year, 12.75 and 13. If you were rounding by going to the nearest one, can you see that 12.75 is the nearest one? Okay, but at 12.75, will it have reached 2,500? No, because it'll be still lower. It reaches 2,500 at 12.83. So in this question, even though 12.75 is the near quarter of the year, to the nearest quarter of the year, when will it reach 2,500? I would argue that the better answer is saying 13. It will reach 2,500 after 13 years. But you will see sometimes discrepancies in textbooks on how they interpret rounding in these cases. Sometimes a textbook would round down to 12.75 because that's closer. But at 12.75, it hasn't reached 2,500 yet. So the nearest quarter of the year is where it will have reached 2,500 the answer would be 13 years. Questions you can do for this one are 12 and 13. Again, we're only going to see this for a short time where you use compound interest and you have to use your graphing calculator to solve. And you only have to use your graphing calculator to solve if the variable you're solving for is t because it's in the exponent. If you're solving for anything else, you could just type in the values into your calculator to solve for them. So we're going to do example four right away.